morning, everyone. The words for the music are found on the parish website for, the, for today's date. Please join us at home by singing, O God Almighty Father. Three, four. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Ask now about former ages, long before our own, ever since the day that God created man on the earth. Ask from one end of heaven to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has its like ever been heard of? Has any people ever heard the voice of a God speaking out of a fire, as you have heard and lived? Or has any God ever attempted to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation, by trials, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by terrifying displays of power, as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. So acknowledge today and take to heart that the Lord is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. There is no other. Keep his statutes and his commandments, which I am commanding you today for your own well-being and that of your descendants after you, so that you may long remain in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for all time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm is number 109.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption to sonship. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm sure you've heard many times a priest, a deacon, or someone you may be talking to. They might say, God loves you. And it's true. But what does that mean? When we say that God loves you, what does that truly mean? In many ways, I think 
we think of love as, everyone thinks of love as something a little different. And I sometimes I equate it to going to the classrooms where you have a dialogue with the children and they, well, what does it mean to be a good Catholic? What does it mean to live out your Catholic faith in the school? And inevitably, inevitably someone would go, you show respect. Well, he's a great answer. Everyone's like, you got respect. But then the deadly question, what does that mean? And they fumble because they don't know. Because all they'll be told is you have to use the word respect. I think it's the same way with when we hear God loves you. I don't think we totally understand what that truly means. We've heard it. We like it. We think it's a good idea. But do we truly understand it? In order for us to understand what it means that God loves us, we need to have a little bit of understanding of what we celebrate today, the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, three persons, undivided, total unity. What does the Trinity mean? The Trinity is a relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, the relationship between the, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one of total and pure love. They love each other totally and purely. There's no bad mixed in it. There's no pride mixed in it, if you will. There's no what can I get out of this, if you will. But it's total and pure love. It is a self-giving love. It is all about doing for the other. It is all about wanting the best for each other. Not counting the cost, but being in service to each other. That is the love of God. That is the love of the Trinity, and that is the love that God wants to give us, and has given us, of total pure love, total self-giving, wanting what's best for us, not counting the cost. Because we can see that God doesn't count the cost by coming to earth in Jesus Christ, the Son, and dying for us. And we can see that God is at service of us. Jesus is at service for us. Because I think sometimes we get it so skewed that we see, I'm in service of God. I'm here to serve God. And that's not wrong. But I think in many ways, when we think about the Trinity, when we think about the love of God, it's about God being in service to us as well. Helping us to grow closer to God. And we are called to enter into that love. We are called to experience that love of God. Not just as the world says what love is, but truly what the love of the Trinity is all about, of self-giving, of unity, of being there. And we can see, we are all called to do that. We are all called to share in the love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God initiates that for us. We do not initiate wanting to go to be with God. But God initiates contact with us always. And we can see this in the first reading today with Moses speaking about God's initiative. It was God who was in the burning bush. It was God who called the Israelites. It was God who called them to be the chosen people. It was God that did all these things for them out of his own initiative. And the same is done for us in baptism. It is God's initiative that he has called us to baptism. And the great thing is, we can see this, is what we heard in the responsorial psalm today. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his own. The Lord has chosen each and every one of us because he loves us. Because he wants to be there giving us a total and pure love. A self-giving love. Wanting what's the best for us so we may be with them in heaven. We can see, and we know people that think that God is unapproachable, that God is way out there. And in many ways, we can say that's what the Father is. But the great thing is, God loves us so much that he does not want to seem unapproachable. 
God loves us so much that he wants to show us his love. He wants to show us his total caring for us. And that is Jesus Christ, God revealing himself to us. Jesus coming to earth to save us. God loving us so much that he becomes one of us. Taking on human flesh, taking on human sinfulness, taking on the bad and ugly of everyday human life. That's how much God loves us, by being one of us and taking on the good, the bad, and the ugly of everyday life. That love of total self-giving, of total wanting the best for each one of us, of not counting the cost. And this is what the Holy Spirit is here for. As we know, the ascension, Jesus went up to heaven, but he says, I will not leave you alone. I will send you the paraclete who will guide you. And that is the role of the Holy Spirit, is to guide us in the knowledge of the love of God in our lives, to guide us in the knowledge of love, that God loves us in a pure and undivided way, that God wants what's best for us, and that God does not want us to be separated from him. That is the love of the Trinity that we are invited to come up into. At our baptism, as we heard, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it is an invitation for us to join the Holy Trinity in their love, in their self-giving love, in their undivided love, in their love what wanting the best for each other, and the total love of self-giving. We are invited to come up into that. Do we accept that invitation? Do we understand that is what God's love is? God's love is us bringing us into his relationship in the Trinity, if you will. Forgiveness is one of the best ways in which God shows us his love. One of the best ways God shows us his love, that total self-giving to us, that total self-surrender to humanity, dying on the cross, rising, rising again so that we may have life in heaven, is what we will celebrate here in a few moments, the Holy Eucharist. That is a wonderful way in which God shows us his love the love of the Trinity. So hopefully, next time we hear God loves you, we understand the depth of what is truly being said. That it is just not some pious platitude. It is just not some way in which we can make each other feel better. Hopefully it does, but it's not a way to do it. It is meant that God loves us totally and purely, giving us totally himself, total self-giving in Jesus Christ, wanting the best for us, the Holy Spirit coming down to guide us in the way to live our faith, to see that God is at service of us, for us, but also to understand that with that love that God has shown us, God is asking us, to be of service to others as well. The Holy Trinity, a mystery to be lived and not solved, a mystery to say yes to that total love. Pope Francis wrote, God loves the world despite its sins. God loves each one of us even when we make mistakes and distance ourselves from him. God the Father loves the world so much that, in order to save it, he gives us what is most precious to him, his only begotten Son, who gives us life for humanity, rises again, returns to the Father, and together with him sends the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is therefore love, holy at the service of the world, which he wishes to save and recreate. And it would be beautiful if we felt that we were loved. God loves me.
Together, together, let's proclaim the faith that makes us one. We will use the Nicene Creed because it is a wonderful way in which we can understand the Trinity even fuller. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we've received from our God, let us ask him to prompt in us the prayers that are worthy of his hearing. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that the church may be faithful to Christ's command to make disciples of all nations and may flourish throughout the world, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That bishops and priests may work tirelessly to foster within the hearts of the people a strong love for the faith, we pray, Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That world leaders may work diligently to promote peace among all nations, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For the souls of Peter Huang Dao, Anthony Tran, Alajin Tela, and intentions of all parishioners whom this Mass is offered, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That as the life of the Trinity fills God's people, they may, as the people of life, bring about a new respect and protection of every human being's right to life. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that every member of our parish family may respond generously to sharing their God-given gifts and talents in the work of God's kingdom. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That those who have died may experience the everlasting peace of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 530. There is one Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord not in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For what you are real to be of to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that in confessing the truth of the eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice lay a claim <laughs> We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image, and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the dominion of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sore full of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. 
so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. But when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks. and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church. In granting your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember all, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, for we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, 
informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. Please join in our offertory hymn, Abba Father. We are 
Let us pray. <clears throat> May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, thank you very much for joining us this weekend, celebrating Mass. and. God willing, in about a month's time, we'll be able to come back in here in the church and do this per in person. So we're praying for that for sure. A reminder that uh, we sent out an email this week about a novena we will start to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The novena will begin, I think it's this Thursday, June 3rd. I think that's when June 3rd is, this Thursday. And we'll start the novena then. And then we'll, on June 11th, which is a Friday, we will have a consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We also live stream the Mass on Friday evening at 7 p.m., so I invite you to join us for that. As I said once again, always thank you for joining us, and we do look forward to that day when we'll be in person again to celebrate the Holy Eucharist together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in our recessional hymn, <coughs> Now Thank We All Our God, number 535. 